Hey there, and thanks for joining us for this Spotlight Series segment. I'm James Green, partner at Actual Tech Media. And I hope you've got your thinking hats on because we're gonna tackle a big topic today. Um, before we get started, I'd like to introduce my guest, Pradeep Sindhu, co-founder and chief development officer at Fungible. Pradeep, thanks for joining us for this Spotlight Series segment today. James, thank you very much for having me on. It's a pleasure. I've got uh, I've got a big question to ask you to try and cover in a short amount of time, but uh, I, I believe you can do it. So, at Fungible, I I believe that what you're tackling is a is no less than a fundamental rethinking of the way that we're going to do computation in modern data centers. I'd like you to describe, uh, you know, in, in as high level as you can, what that means and how your vision of the future unfolds for data centers. I'll be happy to do it, and hopefully I can do it uh, concisely. Um, so James, to understand what Fungible has done, uh, we have to appreciate two uh, trends in the industry that are unmistakable. Number one is that uh, Moore's law has been slowing down and has virtually flattened over the last uh, maybe three, four years. This has been coming on for almost a decade. That's number one. Um, number two um, is that we have uh, most modern applications either move around lots and lots of data or they're written as microservices. Uh, both of these trends uh, combined mean that one has to invent a new animal in the zoo. Uh, the animals that exist in the zoo today are CPUs and GPUs. I'm talking about computing engines. Um, everybody understands that GPUs are good because you need lots and lots of vector floating point, then you use a GPU. Use CPUs for all manner of computations. Well, uh, welcome to the world of DPUs. Uh, we at Fungible invented this term, but before we invented the term, we actually invented the tech. And this tech has been in the works since the end of 2015. And so what does a DPU do that CPUs and GPUs cannot do? Um, the question to ask is not whether one or the other engine can do a particular kind of compute. Any engine can roughly do any computation. Okay, This is called Turing completeness. Uh, I think most people should appreciate that. The only question which is relevant is, can you do these computations efficiently? So what has happened with application trends is there's a category of computations that we call data centric. Um, and these computations have become more and more and more important in data centers to the point where today, I think more than 30% of the power consumption in a data center is spent on data center computations. So it stands to reason that one would actually build um, an engine, a piece of silicon, which is specialized to doing data center computations. Um, so in fact, what the DPU, the fungible DPU does is it focuses on this subcategory com computations called data centric. Um, and I can define it if you like, um, but it's a very, very precise term. Um, and the fungible DPU works in concert with CPUs and GPUs. It is not trying to displace them. That would be foolish um, because uh, in, this, in this era when Moore's law is not uh, active the way it was and performance is not going up by a factor of two every 18 months, you have to specialize your engines. Um, now, because silicon is expensive to do, you cannot have a hundred different categories of engines. You can have three or four. And the three that we are suggesting is CPUs, GPUs, and DPUs, where DPUs focus on their particular piece of the workload, which is data heavy workloads, large amounts of data, uh, ratio of IO to compute is relatively high. Um, it's stateful workload. And of course, everything arrives in the form of packets. So that characterizes those computations. And what the fungible DPU enables is it enables data centers to become much more high performance, uh, much more agile, much more reliable, and much more secure. Uh, that's what the DPU was designed to do. Because this is such a paradigm shift, the folks at Fungible uh, undertook sort of a, an activity to help make it real and help us understand this by demonstrating what it can do with a real world use case. Can you describe that for us? 
Absolutely. So when we set out, right, um, because this was such a big shift, as you said correctly, um, what we wanted to do was, and, and uh, um, in many people said, we don't believe you. Um, so what we did was we focused on the one area out of the three or four where the DPU was able to address, um, which is storage, um, because storage actually these days interacts very strongly with the network. Uh, they're kind of yin and yang. Uh, they go together. If you want to do scale out storage, you have to have a high performance network. So what we did was we focused on the storage application. And because we're very big believers in standards, uh, we implemented the NVMe standard running on top of TCP. And so the news today is that we have been able to deliver to a single x86 host more than 10 million IOPS at 4K. The normal number that people throw around is a few hundred K IOPS. Um, so this is a staggering number, especially considering the fact that it is delivered on standard NVMe over TCP. Um, now, of course, complementing the storage initiator, which is a PCI card that goes uh, into a host. By the way, I should point out, hasten to point out, this is not delivered by one PCI card. There are four or five PCI cards that combine to deliver this, uh, each card delivering over 2.5 million IOPS. To complement this on the other side, we also have a storage target. By the way, both of these are products that we are shipping um, where each uh, node can deliver well over 15 million 4K IOPS and in a single rack over 240 million IOPS. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a quarter billion IOPS at uh, four kilobytes. This is again, staggering number. Um, all delivered on standards. And for us, this is an example of what the DPU can do. There are many, many other things the DPU can also do. But this is one where we saw a concrete value that we could demonstrate quickly. And so that beautifully showcases for us what can happen at the infrastructure level. If we bring it back up to the workload level and even up to the business level, what sort of new world is possible because of this development? I think the business, looking at it from a business angle is fantastically important. Um, let me start by just the economics of uh, large scale data centers and then enterprise data centers. We believe that we can improve the CapEx and OpEx, both OpEx in the terms of power consumption uh, of hyperscale data centers by more than a factor of two. Now think about that for a second more than a factor of two, okay? while also improving the reliability and security of those data centers. For enterprise data centers, which are typically siloed, where uh, you have four or five different silos of equipment and you're not able to disaggregate the way that hyperscalers do, that number is more than a factor of eight. These are not numbers that are achievable by incremental developments in software, which is what has been happening over the last two decades. By the way, software is phenomenally important. And we all know that software improvements happen incrementally over time and more quickly. Uh, this is why occasionally you have hardware developments which shake up the entire landscape. And this is what one of, the, one of those developments uh, in my humble view. This is really amazing stuff. Um, I know you guys have put out a press release and some material about the, the demonstration you just talked about with the storage performance. People wanna learn more broadly about Fungible and the breakthroughs that you're making. Where should they go to learn more about that? Well, they should go to our website, fungible.com, uh, where we will highlight uh, these results, uh, which have been uh, validated by third parties. Uh, and by the way, we're not done yet. Uh, we're not done yet in, in this in setting world records. So I would ask people to stay tuned. So if this 10 million IOPS number is stunning to you, uh, please stay tuned. Um, and there's going to be other news uh, uh, on not just the storage front, but uh, on other fronts. So one of the points that I did mention uh, early uh, in our discussion was this idea of disaggregation, which is the idea that you take the most important resources in your data centers which is CPUs, GPUs, um, and storage, the DPU will be front and center in enabling efficient
efficient disaggregation. Disaggregation has been possible for a long time, but you pay a tax for it. And so no longer will you have to pay a tax for virtualization or disaggregation when you have the fungible DPU. This is very, very important. This is why the fungible DPU works in concert with CPUs and GPUs. Well, this has certainly given me a lot to think about. Pradeep, thanks so much for making time to have this conversation. It was a pleasure to have you as a part of this Spotlight Series segment. James, thank you so much for having us. Uh, it was a pleasure to interact with you and look forward to uh, further dis discussions in the future. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.